Hey everybody, welcome to the first of the HeroQuest tutorial series. Uh, HeroQuest made by Avalon Hills and published by Hasbro here. If you're a beginner, we're starting off with the Barbarian and here's a sample of some of the brushes that we'll be using. So size 012, a dry brush and a separate brush for doing the metallics. On that front, I'll be using two jars of water, one for metallics, one for acrylics, a wet palette, which we'll see often, but you'll be able to get on just as well with a perfectly ordinary palette like this as I'll use for the metallics and you'll want some kitchen roll too. Now the miniature has been primed with a Xenophil Prime which is just based in black, then a grey with white sprayed from above, and on that note, let's get to it. We'll start off with a 50-50 mix onto flesh with burned flesh and base flesh here. I'm just going to thin it down on the palette with a little bit of flow improver mixed in as well just to aid me. Uh, two thin coats working all across the skin. You haven't got to be particularly neat here because obviously we can tidy up as we go. Uh, once you've done this, we'll then move on to the eyes, which will be a thinned layer of white sand, which is just a nice off-white. You want to get that nice and thin as you can see here on your feet, and get a lovely point on your brush when you go to apply it. And on that same point, when it comes to doing the pupils, I'll use the dark blue and just take your time and keep it nice and thin like this. Now starting on the metallics, we'll be using lead belcher for the steel areas and retributor armor for all the gold. You can see me now working on the lead belcher here, just thinning it down for the blade and for the buckles and such not on the belt and on his braces. The gold will be for the hilt of the sword as well as the pommel and also for the wolf motif on his actual belt. The hair is going to be a simple mix of black mixed with dark sea blue, 50-50, just a couple of thin coats of this. And then we'll move on to the red parts of the leather, which will just be red leather, so please ignore the brown as you see it appear here. You will see me later on correct this as I decided to change the tones as I wasn't happy with the original. Going off the character art, we're sticking with the blue leather there, which is a deep blue and canterbrick blue mix. Uh, it's just a nice base tone, two thin coats as usual. I mean, use whatever colours you like, this is just obviously what I went for. And after that, I'll, I'll be doing the black straps and the black parts of the sandals. Again, ignore the brown leather here, as I, like I said before, I changed my mind. I'm then going to be using Rainy Grey for the lovely warm depth and of tone that you can get for the fur areas that are on the like leather parts around the belt and sticking out from around his braces and for his strap on his arm. We'll then be using a nice dark grey to give us a simple base tone across the rock and what have you, which we're then going to add some texture to with some astro granite debris. This we're going to apply with the Citadel spatula tool. It's got two ends, a shovel end and a narrow end, and the narrow end is perfect for pushing it up against the mini so that you don't cover the feet. I'm then just going to shade the metallic areas down with Nuln Oil for the steel and Agrox Earth Shade for the gold. And with that, that is the base colours complete. To kick off with the highlights, we'll be going from our original base mix by adding some natural flesh to it, followed by some highlight skin. We'll be adding this onto the palette in stages as we work up, starting out with the shadow tone here, which I'm just using to highlight around the base of the muscles, just to try and give it a little bit more definition. But of course, you could always have done this with a shade if that's what you wished. I just wanted to have a bit more control as to how I went about this, as I usually do with characters. You can now see me starting to add the mix into our original base and I'll just gradually work this up in several layers as you'll see as the video progresses.
this is now the pure highlight skin which I actually felt was a little bit too bright so I mixed up a small thin glaze with our base colour and some Lamia medium which I then just applied over the entire mini keeping it very thin just to help to transition those blends together and just to tone down those highlights a touch. You can then see me applying the red leather as I said I would earlier and I think that gives us a much nicer base tone. I'll then work this up using Sharpnel Red which I'll then highlight with some Ice Yellow. So here you can see me mixing the Sharpnel Red to begin hitting the raised areas of the leather, trying to avoid those deepest recesses as I can. To this mix I'll then add some Ice Yellow to slowly and increase the temperature of that mix and to create a sense of wear and tear onto the actual leather as you often see with like scratches around the edges and scuffs. I'll work this up in a few layers as you'll see in the video we will never quite reach pure ice yellow as that's just going to be far too bright. You can repeat this process with the black leather as you see here and just use that to highlight around these sandals in a couple of stages as well as all the other straps upon the mini. And with that done we'll now move on to the blue where we'll move up from our base tone through Canterbury blue into Adriatic blue and finally Caribbean blue. So here you can just see me mixing a little bit more of the Canterbury blue into the original base mix and we'll go about this in exactly the same way as we did with the other leather and for the skin. Just working our way up through the blends, mixing as we go in two or three stages for each colour to create that nice smooth blend up to the brightest colour which will be our Caribbean blue. And this is the pure Caribbean blue, just to the edges, just to the tips. And you'll see me stippling it on here just to create that little moment of texture. For the steel, we're going to start with a dry brush of Iron Breaker followed by Stormhost Silver. If you haven't dry brushed before, then all you have to do is just pop a little bit of the paint onto your bristles like this and then wipe off most of the excess onto your tissue paper. You then let this brush over the mini trying not to leave too much on the actual bristles as you go about it. And while we have the dry brush out, we'll take some light grey, in this case a Venestratum grey, and just pick out the edges of the rock and the rough texture of the surface of the base that we added earlier. Of course, not forgetting to actually highlight the other steel parts as well on the braces and the belt. Then we'll move on to the gold, doing exactly the same process except without the dry brush. We'll just be using a brush instead, picking out the raised parts of the Auric Armor gold before going for the absolute pinnacle points of highlight with the Liberator Gold just on the peaks and pink <coughs> peaks and points of the nose such as here. We'll then use these two shades in a blended mix across all of the base of the boulder and here in order to create some nice mossy brown texture. Uh, you can see we just use it on the boulder but use it across the whole base to create some nice tones. We'll then return to our original hair colour mix and we'll just simply highlight that up by adding increasing layers of white to the mix obviously you don't get the pure white because he's not an old man but uh yeah we'll just improve this to help warm the tone and give it a nice lighter feel after that we'll then follow the same principles highlighting up through rainy gray with white sands uh, you can see me mixing the two colors here and we'll blend this up just as we did with some of the other skin tones and leather earlier on We'll now use some Screaming Skull to dry brush across the entire base of the rock in order to help tie it all together and give it a nice dusty feel. Switching to some orange leather to pick out the stitches on the front of the leather and on the back of the belt. And then we'll use black to paint around the rim of the base and a couple of thin coats in order to help bring the whole miniature together. And we'll use a nice light grey edge highlight on the rim of the base just to help set that off followed once that's all dried with a nice coat of ultra matte varnish from AK Interactive 
Uh, make sure you shake the bottle really well and to draw away any pooling with the tip of your brush. So that completes our Barbarian and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed painting him. There will be a list of paints appearing on your screen any time now and if you did enjoy painting him then, or if you did enjoy this video even, then please click like and subscribe so you're notified when the next video is available which will be the wizard. But until then, bye for now.